We're here at the Dirty Kanza All Things Gravel Expo and it is just that and a lot more. So come on, let's go and check it out. We're here on the salsa stand with one of the latest prototypes of the Warbird. Now it's really gone next level in terms of technology on the gravel side here. We've got a dropper seat post, suspension fork, and the ability to fit not only three bottles in the frame, but also underneath and potentially on the other forks as well. That's a lot of water. What's new about this latest prototype? Yeah, the newest one we still um, built on the same foundation of the previous one, as in Class 5 VRS is still a big part of this bike. We still want to have the comfort. Uh, we wanted to push the tire fit. As you can see here, this one has 650B uh, 2.1s on there. Um, that's a growing desire from the consumer to be able to run these bigger tires at a smaller diameter for comfort, uh, maybe for really rocky uh, terrain or something like that, a gravel race. So we're here with Quark, who've got a brand new release onto the gravel cycling and general cycling market. Something called the Tire Whiz, and it allows you to know your, your front and rear tire pressures live stream to your phone or even to your head unit. So you can constantly tell what pressure you're running at and if you're losing pressure, which is gonna be pretty handy. Now you might think, is that a step too far? Isn't it just gonna be adding weight? But they've nailed it down to less than 10 grams per unit. So it's very minimal. So if you're into gravel tech, then you're likely to have heard of Lauf. We're here with Lauf looking at their forks. It's a suspension system that's been designed predominantly for the gravel bike market. And instead of traditional sort of pneumatic suspension, you're looking at a series of fiberglass panels and those flex to take out all the lumps and bumps in the road. So giving you a really smooth ride feel. Probably something that would be really useful here in Kansas. When is a hardtail not a hardtail? Suspension fork, check. Dropper post, check. 2.2 inch mountain bike tires, check. And uh, drop flared bars. Still, it looks like a lot of fun. If I had longer legs, I'd be straight on this. But there seems to be a bit of a running theme this year at the Dirty Kanza, and that's hydration. Absolutely important when it's 35, maybe 40 degrees out there. And we're seeing some pretty interesting ways that people are trying to get around carrying more water on the bike. This is one from King Cage on this Moots. It's a, a pretty unusual way to put a bottle cage, I think you'd agree. So this is the new checkpoint from Trek. It's their all-road offering. And one of the most interesting parts about this bike is the sliding dropouts. So this gives you the choice to run it either a shorter wheelbase, so something that's a bit more lively, more racing geometry, or you can slide it all the way back to give a longer wheelbase. So that's perfect if you're going to be doing some touring or if you want to be a bit more loaded or you've got the chance to go single speed, if that's what you're into. Yeah, so I come from kind of the mountain bike marathon uh, background. So um, I do a lot of four, five, three hour races. This is definitely gonna be similar, but twice as long. So um, I'm cautiously optimistic. <laughs> Great. And uh, typically riding mountain bike and then going across to drop bars for tomorrow. He's been riding the Trek checkpoint in training. How does it take adjustment to that kind of bike? Yeah, so uh, I actually felt really comfortable on this bike just right away. Um, I live in Durango, Colorado, where a lot of our best road rides involve a lot of dirt anyway. Yeah. So I've been riding my road bike on dirt and gravel roads for years, um, which has been, you know, an imperfect situation. But getting on this thing, all of a sudden, you know, the, the opportunities for routes, training routes just expands even more. You can even include some single track. So this bike kind of falls between what I'm used to uh, racing on the mountain bike and then my road bike training. Um, so it was really easy to, to get used to. And um, I mean, the opportunities are really endless in terms of the kind of riding you can do on it. Some say they love gravel as it's a liberal sport. You can wear what you want, ride what you want or even have whatever colour pedals you want, like the Flash, as like you see here. What do you think, hot pink? So we're here with FSA and we've got an updated Metron 60 bar, which is due for release in 2019. So as you can see, we've got a flat profile across the front rather than the 10 degree sweep of the 5D model. And also a few interesting modifications to the shape of the bar, not only to make it more ergonomic, but also a little adjustment to account for the fact that a lot more people are running hydraulic disc brakes now. And in addition to that, you've also got the integrated cabling underneath and space for the junction box. It's pretty neat. So Don, a lot of people at home will be familiar with these tires, but the name is new. Can you explain that one to us? Yeah, so last fall we changed the name. We were previously known as Clement or Clement. 
Um, and we decided last year to kind of chart our own destiny and decided to change the name. Great, and am I right in thinking that it was a cyclocross tire or more of a gravel tire that you started out with? We actually started with cyclocross. Our very first tire was PDX. Yep. Now, all our tires are airport codes and there's a meaning behind the airport okay. code. And then right afterwards, we started work on our USH, which is Ushuaia, Argentina, the end of the Transamerica Highway. Okay. Okay, and that brought us into gravel almost seven years ago. Great. And so what's your focus now going forward? Do you want to remain in the sort of gravel and cyclocross scene and, and develop that? Or do you have any other ambitions? We have a lot of ambitions, first of all. I grew up in New York, so there's, <laughs> there's plenty of ambition in there. We're currently working on a new cyclocross tire that will intro into the market in July. Okay. We also have a commuting tire coming out, uh, AMS, so after Amsterdam. Right. Yeah, yeah, of course. Right. So <laughs> seven, we'll start with 700 by 50, but yep. we'll have a a full size range down to 700 by 32 and some 650B models as well. So we're very much a tire company, even though you see bikes yeah. here. Now this is a really exciting day on the Envy stand as they launch their new G-Series wheel sets. These are gravel specific wheel sets and they're really interesting for a couple of different reasons. Firstly, it's the lightest clincher wheel set they've ever produced, coming in at 1300 grams for the pair. It's available here in the 700C and also in a 650B wheel size. And it features this very wide hookless rim, and that's to reduce the number of pinch flats that you're going to get running on that specific gravel terrain. So as I understand it, FSA was one of the pioneers in the super compact chain rings. Uh, FSA introduced the uh, compact design some years ago, and we've taken it to the next level with the super compact. Yeah. So this really intersects well with the kind of event that we're at today, which is gravel, mm -hmm. um, or any need for uh, you know assisted climbing, uh, better RPMs, things like that. Yeah, absolutely. And what makes these special in terms of like their uh, user friendliness in terms of how you're going to fit them, you know, can anybody use these? No, absolutely. So um, this will virtually fit any bottom bracket shell. It's adaptable for uh, hard to fit ones as well. Um, the chain rings are also removable and you can move up or down uh, depending on the design that you already have and the tooth count and things like that. And I've got a slightly tricky one to end with you. Um, a lot of the gravel bike market is heading towards a one by system. Why should people choose a super compact instead of that? Well, it still gives them a greater range um, and using a different cassette in the back, which may you know, increase their uh, intermediate gears and give them a better pedaling cadence um, as opposed to a single. Although, you know, we do embrace the one speed. Um, we feel pretty strong about this. Now, this is the first of its kind. It's a full suspension gravel or all road bike. 3D printed in plastic prototype, supposedly out in 2019. Now this one's a bit off topic, but I had to check out this new bike from Y Cycles. It's a titanium fat bike, but amazingly it comes in at just over 11 kilos, even with four and a half inch tires. I'd like to take that for a spin. We hope that you've enjoyed the All Things Gravel Expo as much as we have. Super cool to see all of this tech for off-road all in one place. Make sure you give it a thumbs up if you'd enjoyed it. And for another great video from our Gravel Week special, click just down here.